How's everybody doing today? Outstanding. All right, you guys ready to make bunker play? Almost, almost too, too easy to believe. There you go. There you go. So, uh, who here uh, loves being in the sand? I don't mind it. You don't mind it? I love being in the sand. When I was a kid, um, I loved hitting bunker shots because they were so much unlike any other shot on the golf course. You know, you get to splash the sand, you create this, you know, displacement of the sand, and you can hit this high, soft, spinning shot. And if you got you know, good conditions and you know the right green, that thing like hits and checks and spins back. It was just like this is really, this is really cool. This is really different. But most golfers, um, they don't they don't like being in here uh, because number one, the environment is so different and unique from the majority of the other shots they're hitting on the golf course. Uh, and then number two, you know, the technique that they're using or have been taught also seems to be like wildly, wildly different. Um, very often in sand shots, uh, most people understand that we should have the club face open a little bit. Um, but they also make this assumption that if the face is open, the ball is going to go over here. So now I have to aim somewhere over here. Um, maybe we've been taught that we have to like cut across the ball. Like all that just seems like a whole lot of work um, to learn something so drastically different to be able to just get the ball from the sand out onto the green. So what we're going to do right here is understand that there's only three things that we need to be reasonable in order to hit good bunker shots. Number one, we have to hit a reasonable amount behind the golf ball. Let's say one to, to three inches. Well, when you're on the grass, you can't hit three inches behind it. Otherwise, you're just going to chunk it or lay the sod. So bunker shots, by and large, have a much wider margin for error. And that's why really good players think bunker shots are easy because like, I don't even need to be perfect with the low point of my swing. I just have to be somewhere in the neighborhood. Whereas when I'm on the grass, I have to be a lot more precise. So we got to hit a reasonable amount behind the ball. The second thing we need is to make sure the golf club's not going to dig in the sand too much. If the club is digging, right, then we're going to hit a lot of chunky fat shots. And the third thing that we need is just enough speed to toss some sand you know, out in the direction we're going so the golf ball can be, can be carried with it. So as it relates to low point control, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line in the sand about, let's say, one to two inches behind the ball. We're going to take our setup with that line right in the middle of our heels with a relatively wide stance. Now, to get the location of the low point on that line, we have to get our nose or the buttons of our shirt located over that line during our setup. The easiest way to do that is to take your lead hand, put it down on your lead knee, increase the flex in your lead knee just a touch. So now my weight is forward. My shoulders are nice and level, but you can also see that my nose and my buttons are kind of right on the forward half of that line. Something that kind of happens when people get in the sand is usually we got a bigger lip than this right here. And as people get in, they go, I got to get the ball out of this pit, over that lip, and onto that green. So they start looking up to where they got to go, and now all of a sudden their weight is too far back, and their nose or the buttons are too far back, and that's why they whack too far behind the ball. So we got to set up a little bit more forward and then understand that the height is coming from the, from the loft and also the speed. So to get the bounce, right, so the golf club's going to skip or skid versus dig, we got to play with the face open just a little bit. Right? So if the face is open, the leading edge is above the trailing edge. So just like a stone skipping across a pond, it's going to resist going plunk. It's going to skip or glide across that surface, right? A good rule of thumb for how open the face should be would be to get the scoring lines that run across the face to point somewhere between the toe and heel of your lead shoe. Anywhere in there, that's going to work. If the face is so open that the scoring lines are beyond the toe of the lead shoe, that club face is too open, the club's going to slide beneath that ball, you know, like a spatula beneath the pancake. And if the scoring lines are presented themselves more between my heels, now I got too much of a too much of a digging effect. The final thing is, let's make sure that we have enough speed or pace. So what you're going to do with this exercise, we call it the walk the line drill, also known as the Johnny Cash drill for obvious reasons. What we're going to try and do is see if we can't hit the line, feel that little thump or bouncing effect, 
and then have enough force or velocity to throw some sand out. So you can see my club hit right on the forward half of that line. So even though a golf ball wasn't present, I know that would have been a good one. So now I walk the line forward. I'm going to try and do that again. Now that would have been a nice one. Walk the line forward. That would have been a nice one. So now I can walk up to this ball. I can just focus on hitting that line. Right? I know my golf shot's going to be going to be reasonable. So when people struggle in here, they're looking at the ball. They're trying to project loft. They don't have the club face open enough. So now they're hitting way back here and they're digging. And if you hit a bunch of chunk shots where you're going to overcorrect, and now you got some bladed shots, right? So you're either in here, you're screaming across the green, you hate being in here, you don't know what to do, right? This little walk the line drill is designed to give you some confidence and some empowerment that, hey, I can hit this line more times than not. I can feel my club skip more times than not. I can see my ball traveling farther because I got a little bit of pace. So then when you walk up to the ball, just focus on where the line would be, trust the thump, and then let the golf club do the work. So when I'm playing my best bunker shots, I'm not even looking at the ball. I'm like, I want to hit there. I got my face open. Here's some speed. Thump. And it just, just hops right out. So when you go practice at home, you know, don't just throw some balls in the sand and start whacking balls earn your way into a ball by seeing some evidence that what you're doing is actually going to work. Because if you're in there going clank, 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 chunk, 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 nice one, nice one, blade, blade, chunk, you're like, what am I doing in here? I'm just going to be aiming away from this sand all day long, as opposed to, you know, the best players in the world, they'd rather be in here than in some deep rough around the green, because these shots are a lot easier uh, than those shots. And of course, these shots also give us a wider, wider margin of error. So our goal this morning, because we only have 45 minutes, is to make sure everyone is set up perfectly to execute a great bunker shot. I'm gonna help you with the walk the line drill. We'll have three people start in here uh, because we have a relatively small bunker. Uh, the other three are gonna start out there with Kirk. He's gonna help you with the same set of fundamentals. We'll of course answer all your questions, but it's all about having some stuff on video where you have the tools to go home and say, I feel pretty good in here as opposed to being totally lost or confused. Sound good? So on your forward foot, okay. that's right, that's right. So that's the whole point there. So weight forward, right, okay. which also gets my nose over that line. And of course I also, because I have my hand on my knee, my shoulders are pretty level, right, which is what we want. When people have their upper body leaning back this way, right, well now my nose or buttons are way behind the ball. And then even if I have my weight forward, I'm still gonna be hitting, hitting back here. So a lot of times people misinterpret weight forward. Get your weight forward and they go, all right, there we go but my upper body is not in the position to get the low point in the right spot. I need to have my shoulders level with my weight forward. And that's why this little put your hand on your knee trick, I mean, there's no way to screw it up. Just put your hand on your knee, bend your knee a little bit, you'll be in the perfect spot. Oh, the final thing that's really important here is that yes, we want the club face to be open, but we also want uh, the head and the handle to be relatively neutral relative to our belt line, right? So if I get my hands forward, well, now I'm taking the leading edge, which is the digging edge, and I'm pitching it more into the sand. So now it's still gonna take too much sand. So I like to go ahead and put my lead hand on my lead knee. And then from here, I just wanna get my grip end pointing like right at my belt buckle with that club head lined up with my hands. So if you took your club head, lifted it up in front of your eyes like you're trying to inspect how much dirt you got in your grooves, and then go ahead and drop it back down towards the ball, you can see how everything's gonna stay right in front of your body. It'd be really weird to look at the club face like that, right? Nice and centered. Nose right behind the ball, one to two inches or so. Trust the thump. And yeah, now we got ourselves a, a bunker game. You don't have to open your stance. Don't open your stance, right? Because first off, I don't have the ability to do this here, but if I were to, uh, from this angle, guys, let's say we're going towards uh, that, uh, that banner with my picture on it. So there's the face open. If I take that chapstick and I put it on the, the face, Kirk, maybe you can come in here and just hold this here for the windows. Oh, here we go. So go ahead and hold that chapstick on my club face. Okay. Right. But put your hand on the other side so they can see it. There you go. And then lower. Okay. Just hold like that. Okay. Can you guys see? That face is like wide open, right? But where's the chapstick pointed? Is it pointed over here or is it pointed still towards the target? 
for a target. So because you're already using a club, a club head that has a lot of loft, when you open the face, it doesn't point right, it points up. Right? So we don't have to aim left to counteract the ball that's launching right because the ball's not going to launch right. Um, so basically we're trying to set up square, right? And as long as we can hit the sand in the right spot with my normal swing shape, I, I get a straight shot. So we eliminate all those crazy adjustments like aim left, open the face, cut across it. It's my normal swing shape, but all the stuff I'm doing with my setup is making sure I'm hitting the ground in the right spot. I have the bounce. All I need right now is just a little bit of speed or pace and, and we're good to go. Simple, right? All right, so let's take three in, three out. And let's go ahead and get this program going. 